What if Ahsoka raised Luke? These two characters are Ahsoka and Luke, the apprentice and son of Anakin Skywalker, respectively. Both of them were incredibly important in the story of Anakin, and they each contributed immensely to the downfall of the Empire in their own ways. However, in the main timeline, these two characters don't meet until we see them chatting in the Book of Boba Fett about the fate of Grogu and the Jedi Order. But what if they met earlier, and Ahsoka was the one who actually trained Luke? This story has a lot to unpack, and will take some unexpected turns, so let's dive right into it, just like Jar Jar dived into the lake in The Phantom Menace. Following Padme's death, Ahsoka is still on the run from the Empire. However, after the Siege of Mandalore, Obi-Wan reaches out to her in the Force and calls for her to meet him on Polis Massa, the planet where Luke and Leia were born, knowing that she would benefit from knowing about the birth of the twins. Ahsoka, knowing that Obi-Wan wouldn't reach out unless this was a matter of the utmost importance, hears this call and goes there, seeing the children of her former master. Obi-Wan explains the entire situation to Ahsoka, and Ahsoka feels prompted to take Luke. While Obi-Wan initially objects, believing that he should be the one to oversee the child's growth, he thinks that Luke would benefit from training with Ahsoka, from birth, and seeing the galaxy. So, Obi-Wan and Yoda agree to let Luke go with Ahsoka after Leia is adopted by the Organa family. How does this change the story? It makes significant waves, so let's explore this alternate timeline a little bit further. Hey folks, if you're enjoying this story, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications as we update this channel weekly with new What If content. Now, back to the story. In his younger years, Ahsoka takes Luke on many adventures across the galaxy. Both of them are joined by Rex, who acts as a bit of a cool uncle figure for Luke in his formative years. Luke loves hearing Rex's story about the Clone Wars and the adventures that Rex had with his father. Ahsoka tells Luke about his lineage at a young age, including the fact that Vader and Anakin were one and the same. At a young age, Luke is still conflicted. He knows that Anakin was good, but that Vader is evil. Somewhere, deep down, he has a desire to meet the old Anakin Skywalker and speak to him about his experiences with Force. Ahsoka encourages this curiosity rather than suppress it, like the Larsus did in the main timeline allowing Luke to ask questions and develop an inquisitive spirit about his heritage. When Luke reaches the age of 12, Ahsoka gives him the gift of Anakin's lightsaber. Obi-Wan had given it to her when she agrees to raise Luke, and instructed her to give it to Luke when the time was right. So, she does, telling Luke that he can continue the legacy of Anakin Skywalker and bringing light to the galaxy. As an adept combatant, Ahsoka dedicates at least an hour a day in Luke's training to lightsaber training followed by a meditation session where the pair reflect on their training. Ahsoka contemplates her teachings, and Luke meditates on what he could improve upon in the ways of the Force and with his lightsaber. As Luke progresses into his teenage years, Ahsoka and Rex begin to tell Luke more about the flaws of the Jedi. Both of them open up about how they had each been used as pawns by a religious order that had lost sight of their original mission and had become embroiled in the politics of a corrupt government. Ahsoka opens up about how lonely and confused she had felt after the Jedi falsely accused her of a crime and nobody tried to defend her except for Anakin. Rex discusses how many of the Jedi generals, especially the infamous Pong Krell, treated clones like they were objects rather than real living beings, just like the Empire was doing in this era. So, as Luke begins to grow in the light side, he realizes that he will be the first of a new generation of Force users that listens to the will of the Force not simply ancient dogma and tradition. One day, while Luke and Ahsoka are meditating, Rex interrupts them and says that he has received an urgent communication from an old friend. Obi-Wan contacted Ahsoka, telling her that Leia had been captured by the Empire and needed their help. Obi-Wan tells Ahsoka to meet him in the old cantina in Mos Eisley and to bring a ship. Ahsoka doesn't want to be dragged back into this conflict, not yet, but she knows that it may be necessary in order to bring balance to the galaxy. She doesn't believe that Luke is ready to take on the Empire, but she acknowledges that this must be the will of the Force. She tells Luke what is going on and informs him that his twin sister is in danger. Luke, even though he has never met Leia, feels that it is his duty to help defend her and take on the people who are trying to take her light from the galaxy. So, the trio end up going to Mos Eisley and meeting Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan still recruits Han and Chewie, seeing that they were probably more experienced than Ahsoka in smuggling. 
Obi-Wan tells the crew that they need passage to Alderaan in order to consult the Organa family about their next steps. Han agrees to smuggle them for a price. He also says that he wouldn't use Ahsoka's ship, only wanting to pilot the Falcon. Ahsoka agrees to these terms, ready to hop along for the mission and not really caring about her ship that much. Obi-Wan explains that he sensed the frustrations with Owen at the Lars homestead, so he went to see what was going on there. He found Owen frustrated with his new droids, which Obi-Wan recognized to be R2-D2 and C-3PO. This all happened before the cantina scene and Obi-Wan is just explaining this little journey to Ahsoka. Obi-Wan offered to purchase them for a larger price than they had initially been bought for. Obi-Wan agrees, knowing that he's gotten a deal and telling Obi-Wan that he's crazy for buying those malfunctioning pieces of junk from him. Obi-Wan took them back to his home, then proceeding to find the tape containing Leia's message. That is when he had contacted Ahsoka and found Han to help smuggle them onto Alderaan. 3PO and R2 validate this story, with R2 whining some profane beeps in response. During this cantina meeting, Obi-Wan and Luke are briefly introduced, but they get to know one another better on the flight to Alderaan. Obi-Wan tells Luke more about the Clone Wars and about Anakin. He also tells Luke about his views on the Force, which are more traditional than Ahsoka's, to which Luke disagrees with because of Ahsoka's tutelage. Still, there's a bond of mutual respect between the two as they make their way across the void of space. When the group arrives at Alderaan, they are met with the rubble of the formerly glorious planet. Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, and Luke can all feel the pain that came from this world and can feel a void in the Force where millions of lives used to be. Now, there is nothing. As Han attempts to leave the area, not believing all this hokey pokey nonsense, but seeing that there was a lot of damage here, the Falcon is caught in the tractor beam of the Death Star, which is nearby, and reeled in, just like a fish on a line, and just like in A New Hope. From here, the scene plays out in a similar fashion to the way we see in A New Hope. Luke, Leia, Han, and Chewie rush to break Leia out of her cell. Obi-Wan proceeds to sneak around the Death Star and turn off the tractor beam. Vader senses the presence of both Obi-Wan and Ahsoka, stopping dead in his tracks momentarily. He decides that it is imperative he go and confront Obi-Wan himself, especially after his last confrontation with him during the events of the Kenobi spin-off series. However, Vader does send a contingent of his stormtroopers to apprehend Ahsoka. A part of him doesn't want to see Ahsoka again because he knows that there's still a little portion of Anakin down there that might come up if he sees his former apprentice. The gang that liberated Leia makes their way back to the Falcon, dodging blasts from troopers, and Ahsoka deflects bolts with her double sabers. Obi-Wan still sacrifices himself to save Luke and Leia, defeated by Vader and becoming one with the Force. Ahsoka is momentarily enraged, turning her angry gates towards her former master. She screams at him, asking how she could just kill his old brother like that in cold blood. Vader stares back at her his cape billowing despite there being a lack of wind because, you know, film stuff, I guess, and his eyes dead. Ahsoka hears the prompting of old Ben in her head to run, to get Luke and Leia back to safety and preserve the next generation of Force users, teaching them the mistakes of the Jedi of the past. As Vader begins to walk towards Ahsoka, she quickly darts onto the Falcon, just in time for Solo to take off with the liberated princess taking the place of Obi-Wan in the crew. As the Falcon departs, this ragtag group of rebels mourn, but they make their way back to Yavin 4 and give the plans to the Rebellion. Luke continues to co-op and destroy the Death Star with the help of the lovable rogue Han Solo and with guidance from the ghosts of Obi-Wan. Luke, Han, and Chewie are celebrated as heroes by the Rebellion and are made prime targets by the Empire. Ahsoka and Rex are both incredibly proud of Luke, seeing his maturity in the Force shining through. Leia is very pleased with her brother, and they end up working closely together on future missions for the Rebel Alliance. In the years between A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back, Ahsoka continues to train Luke. His thoughts become his own, and he develops his own relationship with the Force. Unlike the old Jedi, Luke is open to attachments to others, especially when it means that they will ground him further in his dedication to serving the Light. As the Rebels hop from base to base across the galaxy, eventually settling down on Hoth, Luke is still ambushed by the Wampa, but his Force training allows him to quickly dispose of the beast and make his way back to Echo Base on his own. Obi-Wan still appears to Luke in the frozen wasteland and tells him to head to Dagobah and seek out Master Yoda. Because as Tauntaun is dead, Luke takes a long time to return to Echo Base. 
When he arrives, he finds it under siege by the Empire. Ahsoka is on the front lines with Rex, mowing down Imperial ground troops with her twin sabers. Luke joins her on the front lines, and when the assault led by General Veers becomes too powerful to counter, the pair fall back and are able to narrowly escape in the Falcon with Han, Leia, Chewie, and the pair of Lubbervolt droids. When they've cleared the Imperial attack, Luke informs Ahsoka of his interaction with Obi-Wan's ghost. Ahsoka remembers Yoda, one of the few Jedi who had actually shown her any ounce of empathy following her decision to leave the Order, and agrees that it would be a good idea to visit one of her old mentors. So, Luke and Ahsoka ask that Han drop them off on Dagobah before their next adventure. Han drops out of hyperspace above the swamp planet, but he doesn't want to risk landing in that swamp and sinking his ship, like Luke does in The Empire Strikes Back. Luke and Ahsoka take an escape pod down to the surface and begin their search for Yoda. Upon landing, Luke and Ahsoka find Yoda very quickly because he seeks them out and is greeting them in a happy fashion because he has sentient company again for the first time in many years. Ahsoka thanks Yoda for always being understanding of her decision to leave the Order, and Yoda says that he could see her path had been different than what he had originally anticipated, and that he wasn't going to push her into anything that she didn't want to do. Ahsoka, despite having different views on the Force than Yoda, knows that Yoda has much knowledge to give. She believes that Yoda and Luke can teach one another new points of view on the nature of the Force, and believes that it would be good for Luke. As a matter of fact, Ahsoka even joins in on Luke's training, remembering what it had been like to train with Yoda as a youngling in the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Luke faces his vision in the Dark Side Cave, coming out on top of his fears. Yoda is impressed with how fast he progresses in such a short amount of time, and he admires the work that Ahsoka had done raising and training him. Eventually, Luke makes his own lightsaber out of some old stuff that Yoda has lying around his swamp. However, that saber is very shady and sketchy, and definitely not solid enough to be used in full-on combat. Luke still plans on using his father's lightsaber when he needs to head into conflict. Luke senses trouble and that his old friends are in a little bit of a situation on Cloud City. And because of Luke's progress in this timeline, Yoda is happy to allow him to go. Ahsoka agrees with this decision and goes with Luke, knowing that they both have to face down Vader. It would be better for Luke to have a partner than to face Vader on his own. Because they took an escape pod to Dagobah, Luke calls for a rebel escort to take them off-world. Luckily for them, a small squadron is patrolling the outer rim for the rebels and is able to pick them up. Luke and Ahsoka thank Yoda for his assistance and hospitality before they depart. Yoda gives them his typical <laughs> laugh and sees them off. They board a Rebel Corvette ready to go to Cloud City. Because of the wait that they needed for the Rebel Squadron to land, there's a slight delay in their arrival. Vader's Super Star Destroyer, the Executioner, is there to greet them. Many of the Rebel pilots are taken out by ties, but the Corvette makes it through the atmosphere, as well as a couple of X-Wings. They end up encountering the Slave One, containing Solo and Carbonite, and they decapacitate this ship. The Rebel pilots follow it to the surface of Bespin, recovering Han from the wreckage and apprehending Boba Fett. Leia, Lando, Chewie and the droids end up taking the Falcon down to the surface, picking up Han and the unconscious Boba Fett before jumping away to hyperspace. Ahsoka and Luke still have the Rebel Corvette on the landing platform, ready for them when they decide that it's time to leave. Ahsoka and Luke duel Vader, who is slower and less mobile than them. However, his mastery of the dark side is powerful. Vader ends up throwing Ahsoka into one of the old windows of Cloud City, and he still cuts off Luke's hand in typical Skywalker fashion. It's like a rite of passage for those guys. Luke still goes off of the structure that he was holding onto, falling below Cloud City. Ahsoka is able to stagger the blow of her fall with the Force and runs toward the Corvette and its pilot, taking it towards Luke's position, which she senses. After her and the pilot pick Luke up, she pulls away from Cloud City, commanding the remaining rebels who were manning the ship to hit the guns and get rid of any TIE fighters on their tail. Then, she jumps into hyperspace and reunites with the rebel fleet. Luke gets his mechanical hand, and Ahsoka meditates on this interaction with Vader. When Luke is fully recovered, Ahsoka approaches him and says that their decision to attack Vader had been rash. She believes that they need more training, so they were to go back to Dagobah and continue to listen to Yoda's wisdom. First, however, Luke needs to make a new lightsaber. And since Anakin had fallen below Cloud City with his hand, Ahsoka says that she will wait on Dagobah with Yoda while Luke goes and constructs his new saber, because that was a very individual challenge for Jedi. 
Luke inquires as to how he would make a new savior because Ilum had been overtaken by the Empire. Ahsoka directs Luke towards the old temple on Lothal and tells him that the Force will lead him the rest of the way. Luke up ends up entering the old temple, finding an ancient crystal, constructing his new saber, and returning to Dagobah after his next trial. Now, he had the janky saber that had been created with Yoda, and this gorgeous green one as well. When Luke returns to Dagobah with his new weapon, both Ahsoka and Yoda are pleased to see him. They're also impressed that he was able to build a lightsaber on his own while remaining undetected by the Empire. Over the next few years, Luke continues to train. He deepens his force attunement with Yoda while learning to dual wield his old saber and his new one with Ahsoka. Finally, after Yoda passes on into the force and tells the two that they are ready, Luke and Ahsoka leave Dagobah and rejoin the rest of the Rebel Alliance who they have been keeping in touch with via secure comms over the years. Ahsoka informs Leia that they will all be returning, ready to help them take down the Empire and defeat the Sith once and for all. Ahsoka and Luke meet the fleet and learn of their plan to assault the Endor shield generator. From here, things transpire in a similar fashion to how they play out in Return of the Jedi. However, Rather than Luke initially going down to the surface with Han, Leia, and the droids, him and Ahsoka immediately surrender themselves to the Death Star security. They don't want to jeopardize their friends who are landing on Endor, and they feel prepared enough to be able to confront both Vader and the Emperor at once. They've been training hard for years. This was surely the moment of triumph for the light side of the Force, and it seemed that the return of the Jedi was nigh. Things play out on the surface just like they do in the movie. Leia, Han, and Chewie end up destroying the shield generator with the help of their Ewok friends, allowing for the Rebel fleet to gain a foothold in the sky. Meanwhile, on the Death Star, Luke and Ahsoka are brought before the Emperor with Vader standing at his side. Naturally, the Emperor attempts to first turn them against one another, to give in to their hatred towards him as well. The two staunch light side users, but not Jedi, refuse unlike when Yoda and Obi-Wan had challenged the two in Revenge of the Sith, and they gave in to their desires to defeat them. So, Palpatine hurls his nasty force lightning at the pair, who easily deflect it with their twin sabers. Yes, Luke is using his janky saber in this situation. It might not be much help, but it's something, and it throws the pair of Sith off to see two double-wielding Jedi. Palpatine realizes that his force lightning is no use, so he sends his apprentice to dispatch of Luke and Ahsoka. Vader goes in hard, attempting to strangle any part of Anakin that was trying to break through. Ahsoka and Luke parry Vader's blows, attempting to subdue him without killing him. They all still sense the good in him. Eventually, Luke uses a small amount of force judgment, the Legend's light side version of force lightning. He controls it to be just enough so that Vader's suit is damaged but not enough to fry the lights of Fort that sustains him. Then, Luke and Ahsoka look towards the Emperor. The two Jedi tell him that it's over, that he should surrender now so that they don't have to kill him. Palpatine, however, simply cackles and unleashes another onslaught of lightning upon Luke and Ahsoka. Earlier, he had merely been toying with them. Now, he unleashed his full wrath. Luke attempts to counter this with force judgment, but he is quickly overwhelmed by Palpatine's energy. Luke is knocked backwards and Ahsoka is just barely able to maintain her double-bladed deflection of his lightning. Vader watches with a rejuvenated rage. Anakin peeks through again, prompting Vader to use his remaining energy to stand up and lunge at his master. Two of the most important people to Anakin, his former apprentice and his son, were being harmed by this madman. They had helped him through difficult situations, at least Ahsoka had, and Luke wanted to, whereas Palpatine had merely used him over the years. Vader's combined love for the pair and his rage against Palpatine allows him to catch his master off guard and stand up to defeat him. Palpatine, who is consumed by his hatred for his two opponents, doesn't notice him coming. Vader simply shoves him down the reactor, letting out a vicious battle cry rather than picking him up and throwing him. And Palpatine falls to his death. Yes, Disney. Death. Vader is injured, but because the duel is quicker than it was in the original movie, Ahsoka and Luke are able to sneak to the escape pods on the Death Star with Vader, jettison away, and end up contacting a rebel transport for retrieval. Due to the medical urgency of Vader's situation, they are sure to pick him up quickly and bring him aboard the medical bay on Home 1. 
Lando and Wedge blow up the Death Star, just like in the movie, and the remaining Star Destroyers are either destroyed or dispersed into hyperspace. The New Republic recognizes that Vader committed a very heroic act and killed the Emperor, but he still tried for war crimes conducted under his Imperial reign. He pleads guilty, knowing that there's no chance for his innocence to be proven and that he deserves punishment. The sentencing is heavily watched across the galaxy on the holonet, and Vader accepts his sentence. In prison, he attempts to reconcile with what he did under the Empire. After gradually turning back to the light, how does Vader's life turn around? Vader spent his days meditating and attempting to help reform his fellow prisoners, especially the Imperial ones. Luke seeks his advice in the Force, as he is experienced with both the light and the dark side while he rebuilds a new iteration of the Jedi Order with a slightly different philosophy on the Force, and Ahsoka helming it as the Grand Master. The New Republic continues to grow, and their peace spreads. However, there are still some Imperials out there in the Outer Rim and the Unknown regions that continue to stir up trouble. The New Republic encounters a mysterious, cunning Chiss warrior from the Empire that ends up giving them a run for their money. Maybe, just maybe, the New Republic would need Anakin's help again to help confront this new threat and restore true peace and balance to the galaxy, just like the Chosen One was meant to do. Thanks for watching today, everyone, and I just wanted to wish you a happy Revenge of the Fifth. We here at Bad the Stew are so happy to be celebrating Star Wars Week with you this year and we look forward to another fantastic year of exploring new Star Wars content. Cheers. Have a great day, everyone. Celebrate. Enjoy yourselves. May the Force be with you. And as I personally like to say, stay bombad.